Video 1 shows the Dix Hall Pike maneuver and the typical pattern of nystagmus in benign paroxysmal positional vertigo involving the right posterior semicircular canal. With the patient upright, the head is turned to the right side about 45 degrees. Then the patient is moved from the sitting to the supine head hanging position with the head about 20 degrees below the end of the examination table. During this maneuver, the orientation of the right posterior semicircular canal lies in the sagittal plane and the free-floating otolithic debris in the posterior canal move down and away from the ampulla. The resulting nystagmus is upbeating and torsional with the upper poles of both eyes beating toward the lowermost right ear. Video 2 shows a positional geotropic beating toward the ground nystagmus during the supine roll test in benign paroxysmal positional vertigo of the right horizontal semicircular canal. The patient is moved from the sitting to the supine position and then the head turned to the left ear down position. As the free-floating otolithic debris moves away from the cupula of the right horizontal canal, a left-beating geotropic nystagmus develops. Next, turning the head to the right ear down position, a slightly stronger right-beating geotropic nystagmus develops as the otolithic debris migrates toward the cupula of the right horizontal canal. Then, again turning the head to the left ear down position, a left-beating nystagmus develops as the otolithic debris migrates away from the cupula of the right horizontal canal. The nystagmus is slightly stronger when beating to the right, pointing to the involved right horizontal canal. Video 3 shows a positional apogeotropic beating away from the ground nystagmus during the supine roll test in benign paroxysmal positional vertigo of the right horizontal semicircular canal. The patient is moved from the sitting to the supine position and then the head turned to the left ear down position. This elicits a deflection of the right horizontal canal cupula due to otolithic debris near, or in this case, attached to the cupula. The evoked response is a strong right beating apogeotropic nystagmus. Then turning the head to the right ear down position induces deflection of the right horizontal canal cupula in the opposite direction and a subsequent left beating apogeotropic nystagmus. Finally, the head is turned again to the left ear down position and again elicits a right beating nystagmus. The right beating nystagmus is more intense than the left beating nystagmus pointing to the involved canal on the right side. Video 4 shows Epley's canalith repositioning maneuver for the treatment of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo involving the right posterior semicircular canal. The patient is first moved into the right ear down position with the Dix Hall Pike maneuver. After the induced nystagmus subsides, the head is turned 90 degrees toward the unaffected left side and the otolithic debris moves further toward the common crus. Any induced nystagmus is in the same direction as that evoked initially during the Dix Hall Pike maneuver. The head and trunk are then turned another 90 degrees in the same direction and the otolithic debris migrates again in the same direction, sometimes producing a brief nystagmus. Finally, the patient is moved to the sitting position and the otolithic debris falls out of the canals into the utricle through the common crus. Each position should be maintained at least 30 seconds or until the induced nystagmus and vertigo resolve. Video 5 shows Samant's repositioning maneuver for the treatment of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo involving the right posterior semicircular canal. The patient is first moved to the right side lying position with the head pointed upwards away from the involved side. After the induced nystagmus subsides, the patient is rapidly taken to the opposite side lying position through upright without a pause and a rapid cartwheel-like maneuver. 
The head should stay turned toward the left unaffected side throughout the maneuver. The otolithic debris continues to move toward the common cruise and any induced nystagmus is in the same direction as that in the initial sideline position. Finally, the patient is brought upright and the head is turned to the neutral position. The otolithic debris falls into the utricle through the common cruise and the direction of any evoked nystagmus should be the same as that observed in the previous positions. Each position should be maintained for at least one or two minutes or until the induced nystagmus and vertigo resolve. Video 6 shows the barbecue maneuver for the treatment of geotropic benign paroxysmal positional vertigo involving the right horizontal semicircular canal. The patient is first placed in the supine position and then the head turned toward the right involved ear producing a right beating geotropic nystagmus. The head is then turned in 90 degree steps for a total of 270 degrees toward the unaffected side. The patient then resumes the sitting position. The otolithic debris in the right horizontal canal moves away from the cupula and then finally enters the utricle. During each 90 degree step to the unaffected side, the induced nystagmus should be to the left as the otolithic debris migrates. Each position should be maintained at least 30 seconds to one minute or until the induced nystagmus and vertigo resolve. Video 7 shows the Goffoni maneuver for the treatment of geotropic benign paroxysmal positional vertigo involving the right horizontal semicircular canal. From the sitting position, the patient lies down on the unaffected left side. In the sitting position, the otolithic debris is located in the dependent posterior part of the long arm of the right horizontal canal. Lying down on the unaffected left side causes the particles to move more posteriorly in the right horizontal canal, and this migration produces a nystagmus beating to the left toward the ground. When the head is turned even farther toward the ground, the particles again move toward the most posterior part of the long arm and fall into the utricle, again producing a left beating nystagmus. Then the patient is returned to the upright position. Each position is maintained for two minutes. Video 8 shows Guffoni's maneuver for treatment of apogeotropic benign paroxysmal positional vertigo involving the right horizontal semicircular canal. From the sitting position, the patient lies down on the affected right side. In the sitting position, the otolithic debris is attached to the cupula or located in the anterior part of the long arm of the right horizontal canal. Lying down on the right side causes the particles to move toward the posterior part of the long arm of the horizontal canal. This migration produces nystagmus beating to the left away from the ground. In the side lying position, the head is then rotated upwards pointing toward the ceiling. The particles then move farther posteriorly in the canal and then fall into the utricle, causing nystagmus beating to the left unaffected side. Then the patient is returned to the upright position. Each position is maintained for two minutes.